Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Nicolas Cordier, CEO of OSE Immunotherapeutics. Welcome, Nicolas. Hi, so. Immunology has garnered a lot of interest, and your clinical focus covers both immuno-oncology and immuno-inflammation. Could you quickly recap your active pipeline? Sure. So, as immunotherapeutics, we developed uh, currently five uh, clinical assets uh, from phase one to phase three uh, in both immuno-inflammation and immuno-oncology. So our most advanced program is Telopi. It's a neoepitop, uh, this cell neoepitop cancer vaccine. Currently in phase three in lung cancer, uh, we have ongoing phase two uh, in uh, pancreatic cancer and lung cancer also in combination or ovarian cancer in combination also. So that's for the most advanced assets. Uh, we have the full right of these assets as well as the second one. So our second asset is uh, OZ127 uh, or Lusvertikimab, an anti IL-7 receptor antagonist antibody, and we are currently running a phase two uh, in IBD uh, in ulcerative colitis. Uh, third asset uh, is our own on TPD-1. Uh, I will re-explain really later on what we are doing with this on TPD-1 currently in phase 1b and expansions to this. And the two last uh, assets are uh, license program to partner our Sirpalpha monoclonal antibody license to Boringer and Lyme. It's a very important partnership for us. And they are currently running a several phase 1B across Europe, US, uh, and uh, Asia in uh, solid tumors. And the second uh, partner program is uh, FR104, a CD28 antagonist uh, uh, who have licensed to Veloxys uh, in the US, a dedicated company in uh, transplantations. And they are planning to start soon a phase two in uh, kidney transplant recipients. So you have a lot going on, but you had some really nice data for Tridophi. So maybe you could share some of the key takeaways from the results. Uh, sure. We published just mid of September our first um, uh, publication in Annal of Oncology, so a very uh, prestigious medical uh, journal uh, about our positive result in the first phase three. So we conducted a uh, phase three in third line, mostly third line patient in a non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, after failure to chemo and then uh, immunotherapy. And we found that, and, and published that in patients that developed acquired resistance or secondary resistance in a randomized trial where we compare patients receiving the vaccine alone, immunotherapy uh, versus chemotherapy, uh, there is a redu reduction of the risk of death by more than 40% during the first year meaning that the overall survival, the primary endpoint was achieved positively uh, with 44% of patients still alive at one year with the vaccine versus 27% only with chemo. So it's a great result in terms of efficacy. The first time we think that a cancer vaccine demonstrates efficacy on survival in a randomized, in a phase three trial. Uh, and it's not only about efficacy because we also um, published that we have threefold less uh, indesirable effects, uh, toxicity compared to chemo. So globally, the patients feel better. We have better uh, quality of life uh, reported based on patient-related outcomes. Uh, so it's a really good signal for us in both in terms of efficacy and, and safety. That's great. So how, how do you plan to build on the upcoming confirmatory pivotal phase three trial? Uh, may, maybe give us an idea of what the regulators are looking for. Uh, based on this first result, we discussed with uh, health agencies in Europe and US. So unfortunately, this first phase three has been uh, primarily interrupted during the pandemic because of the lung infections in these very advanced lung cancer patients. Uh, so we did not enroll enough patients uh, to, to, to have a, a pivotal study and full registration. So, uh, and now we have identified the right populations mostly 50-55% of uh, lung cancer patients that develop resistance, secondary resistance to immunotherapy on TPD-1 or PDL one So we have discussed uh, about this data, this identification of this population with the FDA and EMEA. And now we have, uh, we have agreed all together on the study design on the next confirmatory pivotal phase three. So we are currently 
writing the protocol uh, with the idea to start early next year the first patient in in US and Europe. In parallel, strong, based on strong recommendation from these agencies, we are working to develop also a, a, a companion diagnostic to pre-select the populations that are responding to the to these cancer vaccines, depending on the HLA-A2 gene. So it's a very simple blood uh, test, but we have to validate in the next weeks uh, the, 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 the tools in order to register this companion diagnostic. That's great. So uh, how about the, the development of OSC-279? It, it seems like it could potentially be a checkpoint inhibitor uh, can we understand your ties with Biki, the Biki platform, and then share um, what you offer alongside OSC 279? Yes, OSC 279 is our own uh, proprietary on TPD1, antagonist on TPD1, very similar in terms of potency, antagonist activity compared to Optivo or Ketrida. Uh, but it, with enough differentiations uh, based on biological functions, which allowed us to have this uh, antibody with a granted patents in US, Europe, China, etc., uh, these last two years. So we have started uh, clinical development of this antibody for two reasons. The first one, uh, and we are very happy to announce that uh, in a few weeks now, mid of October, we will release the first clinical efficacy result of this antibody in very selected uh, solid tumors population. But we have developed this antibody first to address some niche indications where we know that the anti PD1 or PDL1 uh, antagonists are working, but there is no registered uh, uh, compounds. The patients have no access in Europe and or US. In these niche indications, there is high medical needs. So we have the possibility to develop in this niche indication this anti PD1. And in parallel, we used this anti PD1 sequence as a backbone of our bi specific and bi functional platform uh, for which we are developing several programs at the research and pre and level uh, to target the PD-1 expressing T cells, block PD-1, and redirect some immunotherapy such as cytokine selectively on PD-1 expressing T cells, so the tumor and rich tumor-specific uh, T lymphocytes. And also to drive the distribution of the drug at the right place, so targeting the right T cells expressing PD-1 at the right place because the antibody drives the distribution. And so is distributed in the lung, uh, in, in the lung tumors, for example, or in the spleen and lymph nodes. So where you have the PD-1 expressing T cells. And so the cytokine does not anymore drive the distribution that the antibody does. Okay, great. So um, for, your, for your most advanced asset in the immunoinflammation space, OSC-127, could you summarize the clinical development to date and then maybe share some of your next steps? So OZ127 or Lusverticumab is our uh, IL-7 receptor antagonist antibody, a full antagonist. is the most advanced uh, IL-7 receptor antagonist in clinical development. Uh, we released uh, early this year the positive phase one results. So very good PKPD, safety profile, uh, et cetera. Everything has been validated. And now... We are currently running a phase two across Europe and nine countries uh, in IBD ulcerative colitis. Um, and we expect to announce by the end of this year, the end of enrollment, completion of enrollment of the patient in this uh, phase two, to the meaning that we will have the top line final results uh, early next year uh, on this very important asset. And as you know, so it's a very important inflection point in the value of a, a company of an asset uh, after a phase two readout in such an indication. So it's a big phase two, randomized trial, more than 150 patients, and we will address both naive and refractory uh, population. There's a lot to um, keep track of. I mean, what, what should investors look for as far as the key catalyst in the next 12 to 18 months? In the next 12 months, I think the there is two to three catalysts, very important, based on our two most advanced programs. So first, on the cancer vaccine, we should announce, we hope soon, uh, um, authorization from health agencies, FD or EMA, to start this phase three, based on the companion diagnostic development, based on the protocol, and then to have the first patient in. Uh, so it's a good progress for us. And in parallel, as I mentioned, we are running several phase two with this cancer vaccine in other indication in combination 
we have announced this year in April a completion of our enrollment in the pancreatic uh, cancer study, meaning that next year, probably mid next year, we should have the readout uh, of this phase two, which is of course a very, again, important readout, uh, pancreatic cancer, there is very high medical needs. And so any positive signal would clearly be very important in terms of value. So two important catalysts in the next 12 months for the cancer vaccine. And of course, for the last one, our IL-7 receptor antagonist, uh, the announcement of the end completion of enrollment and the top line results that we're expecting early uh, 2024. Uh, and of course, again, any positive signals in this phase two would dramatically change the value of the company. Thank you, Nicola, for that great uh, recap uh, it's it's great to speak with you. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about OAC, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.